Hi all, it's Teresa in Gemma's house. So today I am going to show you some pillow covers that I've made over the years out of thrift store clothing. So for my friends who love to sew, I hope you get some ideas on different projects that you can do with clothing that we buy in thrift stores for really cheap. Let me show them to you now. So these are the pillow covers I've made over the years. These larger ones are for a 21 by 20 inch feather pillow that I have. And I'll show you each one of these separately. And these are for the bed, just accent pillows. And these other ones are for a lumbar pillow that I use on my bed to put under my knees. So I'm always changing the covers of them. This first pillow is one of my favorites. It doesn't have a pillow form inside of it. I put a zipper in the cover that I made and I just stuffed it with batting that I had left over to make a pillow form. And I lined it with some other remnant pieces of fabric that I had. This was from a skirt. And I love the embroidering on it and these little shiny things that are sewed onto it too, the little accents. On two different parts of the skirt, there was a different pattern, so I used as much of it as I could. And I added this pink piping. The next accent pillow is similar. It was a skirt or a dress, I don't remember. And the embroidering on it is so nice. It's very delicate, I love the colors. And the back, I used remnant pieces of fabric. I also put a zipper in this one. And again, it's not a pillow form. I just stuffed it with cotton batting. And I used this green remnant piece of fabric to pick up on the greens on the front of the embroidering. And I added a piping and a piece of this ribbon onto the sides just for a nice little detail and also to pick up on some of the smaller colors in the embroidering. Again, I love this one too. These lumbar pillow covers are all from thrift store clothing. This was from a sundress that I actually bought in a thrift store to wear and I did wear it a few times but I found that it didn't really fit me so well in the top, but I love the fabric on it. And so I had enough fabric to cut the sundress apart, and it gave me totally different looks on both sides because the pattern was so varied on the skirt of the sundress. I added this piping and added a zipper. So of course it's one of my favorites because I did like the sundress a lot. This next one is also from a sundress that I bought in a thrift store intending to wear it. When I got it home, washed it and tried it on, it wasn't really fitting me as I would have liked. So I made a pillow out of it. I put a zipper in this one too. And I use just zippers that I have available at the time. That's why sometimes they go this way and sometimes they go the long way. And the same with the piping. I use what I have at the time. This one, I think the black is a nice accent color to these brighter colors. And these don't necessarily have to be 100% cotton like I use when I'm making quilts. Some of these are the stretchy type of cotton and some of them aren't even cotton. Some are more like cotton and polyester. But for pillow covers, I find that it really doesn't matter as much. And this other one is another one of my favorites. This inset piece was from a tiny little tank top type shirt 
that was probably an extra, extra small. <laughs> I bought it in a thrift store, not intending to wear it, of course, but I just couldn't pass up this embroidered design of this dragon. I love dragons anyway. And he's got these little accent eyes that are sewn on, not just glued. So I cut out as big of a piece around the dragon as I could. These pieces are from a pair of jeans that I had that didn't fit me anymore. And I'm learning to always save my jeans. Don't give them to the thrift store, but save them because they really come in handy for making pillow covers and quilts. So I just cut the jeans apart to make the lengths of pieces to come up to the size of the lumbar pillow form and added piping because I think that always gives it a nice finished look. And then there's piping around the outside too, but I used a different color intentionally just to give it a little more interest with different colors. And the back, I did add a zipper to it. And you can see here, <laughs> this is part of the pocket of the jeans, but it was the only piece I had available to cut apart from the jeans to get the size pieces I need. Okay, and another lumbar pillow. This was from a little shirt. It was probably for a teenage girl. And I bought it in a thrift store because I just love these little rose flowers made from the fabric. And I bought it intentionally to use as an accent on a pillow. So I had this thick piping from another project. I started out adding the piping to the side of this accent piece. These two pieces of fabric were actually fabric samples that I picked up at a college one time, they were trying to get rid of all of their fabric sample books that they didn't want, and they really came in handy. So I added piping to the outside of this one too. And this is from a leather skirt that I bought at a thrift store. I knew it wouldn't fit me because it was too small, but I just loved the fabric on it and I had to cut it in pieces to stitch it together to make a larger piece for the back of this pillow form. And I added in an invisible zipper in the bottom of this one too. And this one for the 20 by 21 inch feather pillow. So I made them to coordinate with each other just use different colors from the fabric sample fabric and use the same leftover piping. And this piece from the skirt was already stitched together. It was on the front of the skirt, so it was one of the larger pieces I had available to cut up. And I used the rest on the back See how it's already stitched together from the back of the skirt. And I was able to use the zipper that was on the original skirt. So I didn't have to add a zipper into this myself, which was really a bonus. <laughs> All of my pillow covers that I've made are my favorites. I don't think I have one favorite. These two pillow covers were made from a thrift store shirt that I bought intentionally to use the fabric. It was like a 3XL, so there was a lot of fabric to use on the front and back of the shirt. And luckily I was able to get two nice big pieces out of that shirt to use for the fronts of the pillow covers. So I added piping the same color on both of the pillows put an invisible zipper in the bottom. And on the back, I went shopping at the local fabric store and found this nice piece of remnant material. It's a nice texture and it complements the colors on the front. 
And the texture also looks good with the style of the fabric pattern here too. I think it goes really nicely. So I was able to get two nice pillow covers out of one shirt. And this last one, this fabric I had bought intentionally to make curtains. And I'll show you those curtains that I made too out of these same fabrics. They're one of my favorites. So I added a double layer of piping here to the edge to pick up some of the colors. And on the back, I added a zipper here. But the back fabric was from a woman's evening gown that I had bought. I was really enamored with the evening gown because of the color and the star of it was really beautiful. Unfortunately, it didn't fit me well. And so I decided to cut up the material to just use for other projects. And I think it looks great. Okay, so these curtains that I made are not from thrift store fabrics, but they are from brocade fabrics that I bought a lot of different patterns at the local fabric store. I made these curtains when I bought my last house 17 years ago. And I just love them still. So I stitched them all together so that they're a mirror image of each other, the design. And in between each pattern, I top stitched a fabric tape because I thought it gave them a more finished look. And then on the top, I just added this piece of fabric with kind of a scalloped edge that I made and sewed in these ropes so that I could just use this to tie them onto a curtain rod. And then this is adjustable. I can just unknot these and use them on different thicknesses of curtain rods. Years later, after I made these, I added the lining. This is unbleached muslin so that it blocked out more of the light and you couldn't see the seams of the fabrics when I had stitched them together. And I was so happy to find so many different designs in all the different colors too. So I was able to find 16 different designs of these fabrics at the same store. And of course, I just bought them over time when they were on sale. And I don't remember how much I bought of each one. It might have been a yard because I didn't know what kind of design I wanted to make. So I wanted to make sure and have enough fabric. But I just love these curtains. In fact, now that I have them out, I'll probably go ahead and iron them and put them up in my bedroom <laughs> because they're so colorful and cheerful. Okay, so I hope you got some ideas for future projects of your own. And if I can ask you to please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, that really helps my channel. So thanks again for watching. Until next week, bye-bye.